All right, guys, let's dive into the questions. These are the questions asked in the Discord channel, guys. So if you want to ask questions, anything you want answered, please join the Discord channel. I'll try to do a monthly Q&A, but you can just ask me in the Discord and I'll answer within like a few hours. Let's get into question number one. Rock Solid Holly asks, when is it required to take the step up to commercial insurance? Technically, <laughs> legally, if you're in business, you should have commercial insurance. That is the legal thing to do. You should technically be commercially insured because if you are caught working on a job and a claims adjuster comes to find out that you were using your truck and trailer or whatever to do a business service, they might not cover you because it's not commercial auto insurance. That's one of the unfortunate, annoying things. However, I mean, technically, if you're just on a truck and a trailer and you're not branded, who's gonna know? So this is a, a line that you have to decide that you wanna cross, but absolutely when you have a commercial vehicle, you have to have commercial insurance. Truck and trailer, you won't be able to get your trailer covered under personal, so if your trailer gets smashed, you're screwed. But your truck, if a claims adjuster comes out and it's a little car, he'll know who, who's the wiser, who's gonna know that it was used on a job. So you can get away with personal insurance on your truck, but your trailer will not be able to be covered. You'd have to get commercial auto insurance and that's a risk and you will have to be willing to take. Lord Fartimus asks, how long typically before seeing an ROI with Google Ads? Ugh, Google Ads. I use ClickSkeet, they do great. I had an ROI immediately. Some people have worse luck where they don't even see a break even the first month. If your phone skills are on point, that is so important that you guys know how to close these leads. If you have good keywords, good landing page, good copy and everything, all your ducks are in a row with your Google Ads, you should close within the first week, guys, should. But some people are bad on phones and you might not close right away. And I know it's getting a little more competitive and you have to spend more money now. You, know, you don't close every lead, nobody does. You close 40 to 50% of the phone calls that come in. So if you're not spending enough money to get the leads, it's gonna take you longer. You should try to profit the first month and it could take two to three months depending on your, your ad spend and depending how good you are on the phones and depending on which management company you choose and how good they are at junk removal ads. There's too many variables, but you need to profit the first month. You, you really should try to profit the first month because you have good ads, good landing page, good phone skills. Phone skills are very important. Spence asks, is it smart to start with an SUV and a 10 foot trailer or does it look bad towards the clients? No, it is absolutely okay. Just don't have a completely beat up graffiti box truck like I did. A truck and a trailer is absolutely fine, especially if you slap your decals around the trailer and you wear the polo and the shirt, you'll look fine. You'll look great and it's a perfect way to start. It's the safest way to start. But yes, rock, step up your image when you can eventually get a dump truck. Wes asks, What's your criteria process for yard sign location? How can you be sure yard sign is gonna remain for a few weeks? The answer is there is no process. I've been yelled at quite a few times. I've had a couple guys already call me, say they're gonna report me to the LAPD. There are laws and rules by city, by county. You can get in trouble. You could get fined. I've been doing it for a couple months now. I had a couple of angry customers because we left it outside their neighborhood. And it was, no, it was just outside their neighborhood. It is a by city, by county thing. But generally speaking, guys, find busy intersections, staple them to telephone poles that are like in, you know, busy, crazy areas. And there is no guarantee of how long your sign's up. I've had somebody call, say, we're taking down all your signs that you left in the area. I mean, you just gotta put up a lot. It's a volume game and a numbers game. SS Dump asks, what tasks should we assign to a virtual assistant? Scheduling, dispatching, admin duties, recording daily transactions, all of the above, my man. The better person you find, the better you pay, the more you train them, the more they can do all of the above. All of my assistants do all of the above. Scheduling, dispatch, admin duties, recording daily transactions, all of that. Comes down to your training and how good of somebody you find. Absolutely, you can do all of that. Move My Junk asks, I, the junk removal business, we most of our, most of our removals by hand. So what's your thought on investing in machinery like a front end loader to say get more commercial jobs? At what point in the company's growth would you make this person purchase? Okay. I'm not at the point of needing a Bobcat or a front loader yet because if you're talking about the giant front loaders like the yellow cats or if you just mean like a little Bobcat, it's up to you. I don't get enough of those jobs but I also don't advertise for like demolition jobs and I had some giant contracts, 30,000 and 109,000 
115, but ended up being 109. And we got a whole bunch of equipment rented for that, but that really depends on how often you get those jobs. If you start getting lots of dirt, lots of gravel, lots of concrete, lots of demolition of decent sized buildings that you're demoing or outside structures that you don't need per, like a permit to break and you're getting a lot of that stuff, it might be wise, but that's a, that's a more you thing, my man, that only you could answer. I don't get enough jobs for it to make sense for that kind of equipment yet, but maybe in the future I'll expand to that. We Hall says, your thoughts on hiring, oh, raising the load price for next year. So We Hall, my prices are pretty high. If you're competitive, you can stay competitive, but if you are below the market of what everybody else around you is, like if you are lower, raise your prices, my man. Dawson Bird asks, Andrew Thompson, don't know if you've already covered a video talking about this. I would like a whole video dedicated to setting up <laughs> employees for truck, how to trust the judgment for load price, just a very deep dive in everything you had to set up and what you needed to get the people out on the jobs without you. Dawson, yes, that's a training thing. And that is a good video idea, but I do talk more about this in depth in my course. Check the link below. I go over everything in my course. That is a very deep dive video, but that really comes down to hiring and training. That's just a whole training process and making sure that they're trained as good as you and then trusting them. In this Q&A, I'll leave it at that, but I will do a deeper dive on training employees. You can check my employees video, I do have a video on hiring and how I hire, but I don't have one on training yet, so thank you for that idea. Wes asks again, are car magnets a good temporary option so you can afford paint job decals, not paint, don't do paint, on your vehicle? So when I had the small magnets on the side of my truck, because they're so small that I, I honestly don't think anybody ever came up to the, the magnet that goes on the side of your door. I don't remember the size, but it covers a good portion of your door, but they're not that big at all. They're so cheap. I think they're 50, 60 bucks a pop. It's worth it. But honestly, getting decals for $400 wrapped around, you don't need to do a wrap. Just get big lettering decals, letters in your phone number, whatever, your website. It may be worth to take that $100, $200 you're gonna put into magnets and just save up for the 500 to wrap a giant. Because all you need to do is get so so and so junk removal and your phone number you don't need to do anything fancy but that makes a big difference because people will see it from so far away they'll take pictures but the magnets i don't think i got calls from the car magnets to be honest nobody sees that from far they just don't madman you've got quite the list of questions here let's see what we got when do you hire people when you are starting off in junk removal honestly as soon as you think you need help you're probably going to have to hire somebody but you need to get some jobs coming in to justify the hiring. Most people start solo and just get really good at cutting things down with the saws on, moving things by themselves with ratchet straps and uh, dollies and full dollies and bringing in friends as you need help. But as soon as you're getting jobs, you're gonna need some a part-time helper to do this safely. As your business grows, you should know when you start needing to hire people. How do you hire them? Craigslist, ZipRecruiter, and just Interview, do your research, hire slow, fire fast. How do you set up insurance and such for a hiring an employee driving your truck? Technically, when you hire employees, you need workers' compensation, but most people just pass that part and make them 1099 contractors, which you can get away with. Technically, they're not. We don't need to get into the legalities of that, but yes. As far as driving your truck, you just need to add them to your insurance policy. Commercial insurance is expensive, so if they don't have a good driving record, if you like what you're seeing, you like the Q&A that's going on, you like the answers, you like the content, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps the algorithm and it lets me know that you guys are liking what I'm posting and putting out there. Anyways, back to the video. How much should you budget for marketing to keep two trucks running five days a week? This is market dependent, state dependent, city, wherever you're running your ads. But for me, to keep one truck running full time, you're looking at, if you're just strictly running off marketing, Google ads, and you want that truck to run full time, seven days a week, probably 10 grand a month to keep that truck running, like just 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, seven days a week. I'm spending a little bit more in LA. Unfortunately, it's costing me about 500, 600, 700 a day to keep the LA truck running, but it brings in 50 to $70,000. The expense is pretty high with the LA truck. I feel like LA phone calls, LA flakes, it's just a little more expensive compared to Ventura County. 
but a good amount of money if you're gonna survive just off ads, but that's what I did in the beginning until you get that repeat referral, until you start getting SEO with your Google Maps and you start showing up on Google and you start getting leads from other sources, you will naturally grow from pounding out ads all day, every day. You'll be building up your foundation of your business. The Gatekeeper asks, who are the best customers to market to? General public, real estate agents, property management companies? Well, 99% of my jobs are residential, so, I don't get to pick and choose property management, realtors, general public. You don't get to really choose your demographics unless you're on Facebook, you can kind of, but I'm not doing that on Facebook. Facebook lets you kind of pinpoint by interest and behaviors and demographics. Google, you just throw up an ad. And I've noticed most of my customers are residential in the middle income brackets. We rarely get the multi multi-millionaires who surprisingly it's just your average person, I feel. Males and females, always middle age to older. That seems to be the person that I serve most is in those demographics. Mom of Dragons asks, where do you keep your trucks? I found parking spots on neighbor.com. It's a alternative solution to find parking. You do have to go through quite a few people until somebody says yes to your needs of going in the morning, dropping the truck off at night, but it's a lot more cost effective than getting a warehouse guys in LA. Parking spots in LA are very expensive. You could use also park at storage units. You gotta ask for their pricing, but I found customers or people on neighbor.com with good sized yards that I was able to like store all my trailers. Same for LA. What is the fee? This depends on the person that you're renting from. You know, I pay 500 bucks a month up in Ventura. I pay 300 bucks a month down in LA. So 800 total I'm paying for my parking spots. How much do you save each month to get ready for the slow months? LA, it did slow down a little, but I didn't necessarily prepare for the winter, but you definitely should, if you're in a state with winters, come up with the plan of attack, whether you add more services or you just accept your fate and have savings put aside. But yeah, definitely if you're in a winter state, definitely prepare for that. Have you done any marketing on radio and billboards? I have not yet. Man Antler says, should I start with Google ads with just a GMB and a landing page. You can, absolutely. You do not need a website to start Google Ads if you wanna start making money, but I strongly suggest you do not do that. I suggest you have all of your ducks in a row before doing Google Ads. Complete presence and branding all over the internet, everything set up everywhere. So if they decide to Google you, you pop up, website, Google, your Yelp. You don't need to pay for Yelp, but at least be up on Yelp, be on all social media platforms, yada, yada, yada. Get listed on bbb.org, it's free. Just get everywhere, okay? What do you pay your call center employees for how many hours? They do typically eight to 10 hour shifts a day and I pay them $5 an hour. What are their responsibilities? They run all of dispatch. They do all customer communication, whether it's email, they do all certificates of insurance. They send W9s and COIs to commercial vendors. They do phone calls. They do my admin tasks at the end of the day. They do my profit and loss. If you want me to get you a virtual assistant or you wanna learn how to get your own, check out my VA training program or my course link down below. I teach you all of this stuff, guys, all of it. Oh, Man Antler says, do you wanna be friends? Yes, hit me up on Discord. We can be friends and meet for coffee. Vots, junk removal. Marcus asks, what other equipment besides dump trucks do you think would be a good investment? Is it worth to purchase a Bobcat skid steer excavator for the demo side of the business? Absolutely. Once I get another dump truck and my credit goes up and I can figure out how to finance another dump truck, I wanted to start advertising for trailer rentals, demolition and start looking into light heavy machinery jobs that I can do now that I've learned, getting a forklift, getting a bobcat. I am looking into this, but don't buy that stuff until you figure out how to market to them and actually get those jobs and start with renting it and make sure you can get those jobs. I wouldn't just go buy a 15, $30,000 bobcat, $10,000 forklift until you make sure you can get those leads and practice with rentals first. Then when you're confident and you're getting enough demo work or whatever, yeah, go buy the machine. Groot asks, what's up Groot? You're in the Discord quite often. How you doing my man? Did the neck tattoos hurt? Yes, they did. I've got the centerpiece right here, one over here, which is my favorite quote. And then over here is part of my video game symbol that I'm super into, Corona Trigger. It's like a, a Lotus mixed with the symbol of Corona Trigger, my all time favorite Super Nintendo game. Best game in the world, Corona Trigger. How does it feel to have a wife? <laughs> How does it feel to have a wife that's cooler than you? She is cooler than me, feels awesome. If renting equipment, whether to get started or overbooking, how do you manage coordinating pickup drop off efficiently? What if you overbook? Honestly, I don't rent any equipment. I can't answer this group. I don't have this problem yet, so I don't wanna say something I don't know much about. What kind of jobs would you not recommend tackling in the first month of business while getting one's bearings? Dirt, gravel, concrete, avoid. 
What's the number one thing you do to maintain a healthy, sustainable, low friction work environment for your workers? They work their asses off. They work hard, but I do a four day and a three day schedule. They work four days, have three days off. The guys on the weekend do three days, have four days off. So they get a nice three day break or a nice four day break. That's how I do it. I do not do the five day schedule. I like to give my guys three days off. Matt Rexing asks, what insurances are really needed and what options do you have to get creative with coverages or what do you need to stay under the limit for DOT? So DOT, you need a DOT number out here. It's a CA number and a DOT number. Any commercial vehicle or 10,000 pounds or higher, so you can't avoid that. But insurances you really need, you have to have auto and you should have general liability. Workers comp if you have employees, but a lot of people skip that step in just 1099, which is illegal, but we all do it. I don't do it anymore, but you need workers comp once you start employing and you have them on payroll. General liability, you can get through Next Insurance or Byberk. When they ask you the question of how much money you're gonna make, put a very low number and your general liability will come out cheaper. Commercial insurance, most people stick with personal until they can afford commercial. So you need them all, but this is kind of a pick and choose and what are you willing to kind of do? A lot of people in the startup phase, I sure as hell did for like the first year, not recommended, but yeah. Roll Max Ops asks, yes, that would be helpful. Also required DOT annual testing training for employees, if any, and how is that process to get your CA number with the CHP? A lot of paperwork, super annoying to get it. As far as the annual testing and training, I do remember seeing that and I got a bunch of mail about the annual testing and training. Truly, I thank you for reminding me about that. I don't actually know, but when I did get that number, I remember them saying something about that. So I need to look into that myself. So if you guys know anything about that in California, comment below, please. Roll away junk removal. How do you deal with customers when they lose interest after telling them about the minimum charge one single item pickups in the beginning? Single item pickups are the hardest to close. You can offer curbside and discount it. So my minimum is 150. And sometimes it might even be worth doing the single items for a lot less in the beginning, just to start getting customers into your database. You'll get that customer, even if you get the discounted a lot more from like 150 to 99, because you then get another customer in your database. You then also get to show off your decals around your truck, park it in the neighborhood. Customers will see it. You also then get to give them a flyer, a business card, a coupon. You get the chance for a repeat business in the future with your charm. You also get the chance for a referral with your charm. Single items in my are a loss, period. It costs me $120 to get in front of a customer. That's just my CAC, not including phone operator sales, not including gas, not including the dump fees to get rid of it. It's a loss, but it will keep the guys busy. It might not be a loss for you because it's only you on the truck in the beginning, but it's a loss for me with two employees on the truck, gas, blah, blah, blah. But I would discount curbside, get them into your database and you can remarket them next quarter for a spring cleaning, a summer clean, whatever. So that's how I look at single items. Roll away junk removal also asked, do you do anything extra to try and close the deal or just accept the lead that isn't for you? And I just, yeah, I guess I just answered that. Yes, I will do curbside pickup offers to discount the price dramatically, meaning they do the work and that's really about it. So it really is up to you how cheap you wanna go on single items to get that customer get them a business card, a flyer, a discount coupon, ask to put a yard sign in their yard if they're a house for a week because of that discount. Don't tell them that over the phone, but once you get there, be like, hey, since I gave you 50 bucks off, do you think I could leave a yard sign here just for a week? I'll come back and pick it up because a referral from your neighbor with a yard sign is much more powerful than a referral, just a yard sign elsewhere. So a lot of opportunity with single items, definitely capitalize on them. Top two, top two off? Top Tatoav? I can't tell that's a Y or V at the end, but Tatoav. One, how to get unit cleanouts bigger jobs. So the truth is you can go to apartment communities with apartment complexes and try to get on their vendors list in person selling yourself. Otherwise, all of my cleanout jobs, they come from Google ads. You can do all of the marketing in the world, but at the end of the day, to target specifically cleanouts, you can run ads targeted to cleanouts and Property cleanouts, hoarder cleanouts, house cleanouts, eviction cleanouts. Google Ads is definitely where we get all of our biggest jobs. I mean, we just did a $6,500 job two days ago. In terms of not Google Ads, sell yourself to apartment complexes. Try to get on their vendor list. Try to talk to storage units. Try to talk to realtors. Get in with realtors. Drop off gift boxes and try to build a network of people that have access to those type of jobs. Oh, best way to rent realtors. I got a lot of my realtors just from Google ads and building that relationship. I have not done this, but I know a lot of people do this in the beginning and it works. Sonoma Strong, 
talks about this all the time, how they went to real estate offices and sold themselves. They came in with a little gift basket of candy, their business cards, go to the Dollar Tree store, watch my video here, nine free marketing strategies, uh, almost free marketing strategies. I talk about how to do a gift basket and go sell in person and use your charm to real estate offices. Here in LA, we've got hundreds of them. So you should definitely do that. That would probably be your best way to win realtors. You can also outreach them on Facebook. You can look for realtor Facebook groups in your area. You know, outreach won't be as effective as going in person to an office like a Keller Williams office and selling yourself with a charm and a gift basket and leaving flyers and coupons and business cards. Also, Tatov also asks how to set up a VA to answer calls and set up appointments. I actually just posted a video. Check it out here. And it is a long process, but very, very worth it. Not long, but somewhat time consuming. So check out that video. And this is from unknown. We don't know who this is from. Would you create different LLCs with junk removal and demo? Short answer, no, no reason to. But it also depends on how serious you're gonna take demolition. Are you gonna take demolition to the, the level of demolishing houses? I think it's a C21 license that gives you the contractor's demo permit license or whatever it's called to demolish actual structures and buildings. If you're gonna take it to that level, yeah, that might be its own company. But if you're just doing light demo with your junk removal, no, you don't need another company for that. And guys, that is all of the questions. I don't know how many questions we answered, but it feels like there was at least 30 or something. I hope that helped. If you have any questions and if you like the video, as always, please comment, like, subscribe. It helps the algorithm. As you probably know by now, if you want the most awesome course before the price goes up, it is currently $500 as of the 3rd. September 3rd, the price is 500 and it's going up to 1,000 or 1,500 in the next week or two. So I strongly suggest you get it now. It has everything you can imagine, A through Z, building a website, running a junk removal company, scaling, getting a virtual assistant, running your own Google ads, all of my research, everything you could possibly imagine, plus 12 months access to private community, which we do weekly Zoom calls. Every week, we're there for an hour, we just chat, get to know each other, answer all of your questions, and I record all the sessions in case you missed them. Check the link in the video description below, junklaunchbyjedi.com. Here's a little mini hype trailer to get you guys excited if you want to check out my course. And rolling. Let's tell you my story real quick. I've always been a software engineer my entire life. I started programming when I was 10 years old, but I started with HTML on AOL 3.0 and they would teach you basic HTML tags. So I was learning this shit at 10 or 11 years old. Then I just slowly progressed and started building more websites, learning PHP, learning databases like MySQL and all that stuff. The last app that I was working on was a travel app. I raised $150,000 from investors, and that was actually right before COVID hit. It was a travel app meant to travel with friends across the world, the globe, and they didn't even want you to hang out with your family. I kept telling the investors, it's gotta go away someday. I have the app semi ready to go. You know, we wanted to start doing beta testing, but nobody wanted to fly, let alone pay for this new experimental travel app that I was trying to show to the world. Me and my lady had our second kid, newborn, and we're burning down to our last few thousand dollars. And it's getting to a point where I'm like, we need money now. So one of my friends I was talking to, and he's like, dude, I used to do junk removal. I looked into it, I Googled it, I found Sonoma Strong, $1,000 a day, Steve Conroy, $1,000 a day, $2,000 a day, and I was like, a thousand dollars a day. Started with Thumbtack, started with Craigslist, got to Google Ads probably by month one or like the end of month one, month two, I think. Went from 200 a day to 500 a day to a thousand a day. From there, it's just been incredible. This is a great industry. If you're stuck and you need to figure out how to make some extra money, you can grow this into a very profitable business. You can do very well for yourself. I'm doing very well for myself. It takes a lot of work outside of the labor part, the marketing part, the hiring part. Everything is hard. It has potential. It is a very easy-ish, predictable path to make money. The service industry is so much easier to get into because it requires just your time and everybody's gonna need this service, okay? You trade your time for money. It doesn't matter if it's landscaping, 
moving, junk removal. There are so many home services that you can get into that don't require a skill. People need this home service. So getting into the services business is a very safe, predictable, slow growth path, but very doable. That is the beautiful thing about junk removal. So guys, if you wanna check out the course and you want your A to Z on how to build a junk removal business, check it out in the link below. And as always, guys, I leave you with this. Success is often covered in dirt, but so is gold at one point. Toodles!